Over the last decade, consolidation and cost-cutting measures have resulted in dramatic losses for local journalism in all but the largest markets. At the same time, the growth of digital journalism and the digitization of information have greatly expanded the opportunities for storytelling and for reaching new audiences. As a result, the competitive landscape has shifted. No longer are most media organizations competing head-to-head -head with each other. Today, organizations compete for attention against social media platforms, gaming apps, search engines that personalize content discovery, and much more. Thus, we've seen the rise of collaborative journalism. More so over the last several years, journalism outlets are turning to collaboration as a way to share data and expertise, take advantage of digital tools, stretch their resources, and grow their audience. So when we say collaborative journalism, we're talking about journalists working across traditional boundaries and across company lines to partner with other news organizations to share story ideas, tips, leads, resources, and to ultimately develop content that otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do on their own or to have a wider audience than they wouldn't have been able to have um, if they had been doing it by themselves. And today, by collaborating, we can leverage the power of many organizations to tell stories that have impact across multiple communities and that can help solve problems. In 2018, collaborative journalism is being practiced on a scale that we think constitutes a revolution in journalism. It's evolved from experiment to common practice, and we see projects being developed all over the world that involve two organizations working together on a single topic to dozens of news organizations working across continents on stories that are highly complex in multiple languages, long-term, and have really impactful outcomes. Collaborative projects have won multiple Pulitzer Prizes in the last few years, and recently the Online News Association added a collaboration category to its annual awards as well. And I think that shows that the industry is starting to embrace this practice, and we are continuing to see outside funding invested in collaborative journalism. I work at ProPublica, and when ProPublica first started, um, collaborative journalism wasn't really a thing. Um, it was uh, something that happened quite rarely, um, and only in certain special circumstances or certain commercial circumstances. Um, I remember that we were told early on uh, in our time at ProPublica that that part of our plan would never work, um, and that news organizations weren't going to work with us because it was in their interest not to. Um, and that turned out not to be the case. In my 2017 report comparing models of collaborative journalism, I cataloged 44 collaborations between more than 500 newsrooms. From this deep dive into how collaborative journalism is being practiced in the field, I identified six distinct models, which are based on two variables, duration and level of integration between newsrooms. In terms of duration, projects are either temporary or ongoing. For level of integration, partners may create content separately, which is the lowest level of integration, they may co-create content or they're highly integrated to the point where they share resources at the organizational level. And we've given each model its own distinct name to reflect these distinctions. So for example, a temporary and separate collaboration is a one-time or finite project where partners create content separately. An example of this would be the San Francisco Homeless Project, where more than 80 local news organizations came together to report on the causes of and solutions to homelessness in San Francisco. On the other end of the spectrum for finite projects are fully integrated collaborations where partners share data and resources at the organizational level. An example of this type of project would be the Panama Papers, where more than 100 media organizations around the world collaborated by using a proprietary data sharing and social network to communicate and create content. For ongoing projects, we see collaborations shift and evolve from one model to another usually based on the success they enjoy or the challenges they face. So for example, they may go from creating content separately to working together to create content, even to sharing back office services such as accounting or membership. One of the primary signifiers of successful collaborations are those that are effective and useful for all of the partners, and they're built around shared values and shared goals. Getting editorial alignment in collaborations can be a tough and messy process. Some of the most common and successful collaborations tend to be those that are formed or inspired by an upcoming event, which multiple news organizations would have covered anyway, like elections or planned protests. Some are inspired by an impending or looming crisis. 
inspired by a lead partner who initiates conversations among other partners about teaming up on a particular topic. Some are inspired by a partner who's having trouble cracking a story on their own and needs help to do it effectively. Or inspired by a partner who brings resources to the table in terms of funding, such as a grant or other support. Now what is powerful about collaboration is that it can take many shapes and address problems that are a bit old, like how we can keep newsrooms alive so they can continue their important work, such as how Coast Alaska connected multiple newsrooms confronted with budget cuts and the threat of being shut down, but through working together they found a path forward and have remained essential to their communities through more than two decades of collaboration. And we see collaboration serving problems that are newer, like addressing the changing social challenges and institutional upheaval that we see everywhere today, and that are being covered by collaborative projects like State of Change, which connected newsrooms across the undercovered Mountain West and has since evolved and extended into additional projects in other states, and in projects like Broken Philly, which recently launched to cover economic inequality, or the Reentry Project, which covered the path from prison back into society. We see it in projects like Documenting Hate, an excellent example of a newsroom like ProPublica, using its strength to empower local newsrooms to cover an incredible gap in information around hate crime in the United States. The wall started with an idea in Phoenix, but almost immediately it became clear this idea was bigger than any one newsroom. We had reporters who knew a lot about the topic, who were ready to cover a lot of stories, but we had ambitions that were a lot bigger than that. By the time we got to the point of talking about flying a helicopter 2,000 miles along the entire border, we knew that we needed support from across our entire network. We worked with reporters and photographers, videographers, producers, editors, and other staff in every time zone in the country. We collaborated with outside partners to help us make the helicopter flight happen, design and envision the digital presentation. The back end of the project where we shared the work that we had done. In the final weeks before the wall was published, a group of people who were collaborating on the project met by phone and video conference every week. And it became almost like we were in the same place. In the end, we couldn't have done what we did without working together and we realized we'd never worked together in this way before now. There's a lot that newsrooms can learn from existing collaborations, which is why in 2018, we started creating a comprehensive database of collaborative journalism projects from all around the world. The database is a resource to help newsrooms and organizations that want to collaborate, as well as those that want to better understand existing projects and learn how they've worked. Collaboration is essential to navigating that intersection of journalism, the constitutionally protected service that is necessary for a free society, and the industry of journalism that supports that work but frequently comes with traditional notions of competition. And we're experiencing an overall shift in thinking about those traditions, who can do journalism, whose voices are needed in the editorial process, and collaboration is a requisite part of how we continue to fulfill this role in society. We're fortunately seeing a lot more conversation about what does it mean to do journalism for and with communities, not just about communities. And collaboration is an essential part of that. The future of journalism is collaborative.